Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. This is our first official video of the book club series we're doing now. And of course, we are going to first feature So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Oluo. Now this video is not at all sponsored by the author or the publisher or the book in any way. And it is just a book that I have read on my own time for my own reasons. And now I get to share it with you. I hope you've had a chance to read it. If not, that's all right. We'll go over some of the main points and takeaways that I have. And of course, I would love to see in the comments anything uh, from your perspective. I really want to know what it is that you got from this book. And uh, without further ado, we'll just dive right into the three main takeaways that I had from this book. For me, this book was a great introduction to the conversation about race, especially in the United States. There are a lot of uh, big ideas and concepts that kind of get tossed around as we're listening to conversations, as we're hearing things on the, on the media, uh, as we're reading articles and comments. There's a lot of vocabulary out there that may be unfamiliar to you as it was for me. And so I really appreciate being able to see kind of a great overview through this book of, of quite a few different concepts that before I, I wasn't even aware of some of them, like, like the school to prison pipeline. I had never heard of that. And she does a great job of not only giving us anecdotal evidence with some stories and personal experiences, but also some facts about, you know, the numbers and, and actual things that happened. And it's a great... Uh, it's a great discourse on some of those things, especially an introductory discourse, and it gives you a lot of things to think about. So with that, my, my first main takeaway from this book was the idea that your lived experience is just as valid as my own. Now, this may seem obvious, but I think she repeats this message throughout the book because it's so easy to not recognize when this is actually happening. It's very common for us to, to not realize that what we're doing, what we're saying in some of these conversations is, is really we're just invalidating the other person's experiences without actually getting to the cause of the issue, what what we're actually talking about. We get too focused on how we're talking about it rather than what we're talking about. And it's easy to get distracted on that. And, and she does a great job of, of pointing that out with some examples. But I do I do think that the idea that you know, my my point of view is valid because you know I actually have experienced it. Uh, therefore, your experience is not valid. Like, it's so illogical. And, and of course, that's to be expected with some of these things because sometimes we get messed up with our subconscious and with the emotions of, of topics like this that we don't realize that that's what we're doing, but it's absolutely not okay. And we must work to get rid of that habit of, of invalidating somebody else's experience. The, some of the biggest problems that we, we see as a result of this common occurrence of, of invalidating the experiences of people of color is that, you know, white people have privileges and have different experiences and viewpoints that are different. And the problem is, is that we are ignoring or invalidating the people of color's experience just because it doesn't match up with what we've experienced. The problem with that is that, you know, we we can't get anywhere. We Nothing will ever change if we always think that there really is no problem when there actually is. So it just could, continues this, this, this problem of either ignoring issues, not taking care of things, and, and, and also continuing the disrespect of people of color because we're not listening to them. We're not actually allowing those grievances to be expressed and we're not doing anything when they are expressed. So I really love how Idioma's approach as she's writing about these things is she kind of takes a, a situation apart and looks at several different angles and several important 
angles from just one side. So for example, if you're a white person, uh, she gives you some really great feedback and some tips on how to approach a conversation about race, how to take a step back and to sit and listen, listen, really listen and learn from the, a person of color, from this conversation that you're having. And she realizes that by doing this, you know, people have a tendency to think that, oh, you know, now that I've listened to one person that I'm suddenly, you know, an expert. And so she cautions against that. And I love what she says here in this quote. Be aware of the limits of your empathy. Your privilege will prevent you from fully understanding the pain caused to people of color by systemic racism. But just because you cannot understand it, that does not make it any less real. That's really important because it's easy to get caught up in the thinking that, you know, I'm being empathetic, I'm, I'm listening, therefore I get it. Like, wow, I, I totally get what it's like to be a black person, for example. But look at me, I'm white. I will never ever know what it's like to be a black person in America. I just cannot do that. And that's where the, the caution comes in and I really enjoy this exploration of, of empathy because I am always an advocate for empathy, but we also need to be careful that we're tempering that by understanding that just because we're practicing empathy does not mean we get it. It does not mean that we can speak as if we understand it. And, and it gives us no right to express ourselves as if we, we somehow know what it's like to be a person of color because we literally can't unless you are a person of color. I don't know how much nature plays into it. I don't know if it is human nature to be racist, but I do know that we have been socialized to be racist and we have racist tendencies and ideas that have been built into us by society. It's just a fact and everybody's going to have a bias, probably more than one. And it's our job to work to one, discover those biases and the two, try to minimize the impact of these biases on other people. Yes, we may never be truly unracist. We, we will never be perfect, right? But we can reduce the amount of pain that we're inflicting on people. We can reduce the amount of times that we mess up and say or do the wrong thing. And that's what's most important is how do we reduce the impact of our racism, our personal racism on other people. And that's something that she encourages us to do throughout the book. And I think that's a, a very important exercise and it really will create an impact if we can do this at scale. If everybody is working towards this, we're gonna see some, some decent changes. It won't fix everything and we still need to do other things to, to fix uh, and to repair the, the damages done. We need to do a lot of things in government, but we start with ourselves. The second big takeaway is the idea of checking your privilege. So as a white person, especially, we need to check our privilege. What does this even mean? Now, I first actually ran into this idea when I, I went to uh, an event, a support group event, with LGBTQ plus people and their allies, people that, that want to support those people. And it was a really cool activity because we all lined up in a line uh, next to each other in this large room, every single person. And there was one moderator at the front of the room who would read some questions. Now these questions were yes or no questions. So if, you, if it was a yes or basically an advantage, you would take a step forward. And if it was a no or a disadvantage, you would take a step backward. Now, it was amazing to me to see the distance of people as we started to separate from, from each other. There, it was across the room. There were so many different situations that were kind of expressed in this, in this idea of, of position. 
And it was eye-opening to me to see how privileged I, I really was. And the vast majority of us were white. And so uh, it was clear from the people of color that were in that group as they started to drift towards the back, uh, you know, it, it's not about what choices they were making. It was more about the situations that they were born into. It was about the societal uh, issues that that kept them back and, and some of the, the just disadvantages that come from the situation and it's nothing that they did almost nothing in there had anything to do with choice or you know ability as far as like the American idea of you know work hard and and things will pay off you know, good things come to good people that whole thing none of those questions led you to believe that they could be influenced by your efforts alone so that was a great way for me to see it because we were physically moving and I could see from this diverse group of people how different situations had led certain people, you know, clear to the front of the room with tons of privileges and clear to the back with tons of disadvantages. And it, it, it's really a revealing activity and exercise to do. And so I encourage you to actually take the chance to check your privilege. In fact, that's going to be your challenge for this video is to take, you know, 10, 20 minutes and write down all of your privileges. Don't write down your disadvantages and Idioma even includes this in her book, you know, don't don't focus on the disadvantages that you've got. Only write down your privileges. This is the time that we need to reflect on really what is it that has given me an advantage over somebody else you know, that I, I didn't necessarily earn, I didn't necessarily, it wasn't as a result of my efforts, it's just because of my situation. Now she gives you quite a few questions that are great to go over. In fact, I'll read a couple of them for you. Have you always had good mental health? Did you grow up in a uh, middle class? Uh, are you white? Are you male? Are you non-disabled? Are you neurotypical? Are you a documented citizen of the country in which you live? So those are just a couple of the questions that she gives you in the book, and there are a couple more. And I'm sure that online you can find other lists of questions that will help you really dive deep and see what what privileges are, are, are you able to take advantage of. And it's a really revealing process, and it can be really painful to realize that <laughs> A lot of your success in life is is honestly not as dependent on your efforts, on your skills, as it is by your your privilege, things that you were just born into. And that is revealing. So the last point that I really enjoyed from this book, the, the thing that I really took away from this, and, and of course I love this phrase, you are not defined by your mistakes alone. Obviously, everyone is going to make mistakes. There is zero doubt about it. It is an absolute truth. You're gonna make mistakes and you're probably gonna hurt some people and you're not gonna do it intentionally. And, and that's just the way it is. And so we do need to recognize that that's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna be a painful thing that we're gonna experience as we're trying to learn, grow, and improve. But the problem is it's easy to get discouraged when you're when you're reading about this stuff and and you're looking back through your life and you're realizing, you know, ah, that was racist, that was racist. I did that again like it's so painful and it's it's really easy to get discouraged and to think that everything that you do is wrong. And it's like what's the point of doing anything then because I can never get it right. Now, here's where I think Idioma has done an amazing job. Yes, we're brought low by these things where we see our darkness. That's something that is extremely painful for, for anybody. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as good people. As a majority, you know, that's what we want. We want to be considered good people. We want to feel like we're good people. And it's really hard when we're seeing these evidences that <laughs> we're not as great as we think we are. Don't get discouraged because it's so important to get this work done. It's so important to find the darkness in ourselves. And the reason is 
the darkness that's never confronted or never even discovered can never move. It can't ever diminish in size. It can't ever, you know, we can't do anything with it if we don't even know where it is or if we've never looked in ourselves for it. And the, I think Ijeoma puts it really well. Uh, she says, your mistakes or your achievements will never on their own define you, but you can only do better if you're willing to look at your entire self. And I totally agree. There's, there's nothing to be gained by only assuming that you're a good person and always looking at those things that, that justify that reasoning, that, that conclusion. We need to look at ourselves from a fuller picture. We need to be able to see the good and the bad because that shows us where we can improve and how we can become better people. Now, she continues on with this. In order to do better, we must be willing to hold our darkness to the light. We must be willing to shatter our own veneer of goodness. Yes, it's going to be painful as you're looking at yourselves in a, a different light, a new light. You're going to realize as we're delving deep into these unconscious biases uh, that there's just a lot of things that we despise, that we see in ourselves, but don't just ignore it and don't just call it something else. It's time to confront it and to improve how we act. And that's going to make a huge difference for people in our current situation and in the future. And isn't that really what's worth it? So I have one question for you to consider so that you can continue the dialogue here. What is the one thing that you can do to change as a result of your new knowledge from, from this book or from this discussion here on this video? I hope that you have gotten some good value out of this conversation and especially out of this book. I definitely encourage you to go read it. Again, this is not sponsored, but I do think this is a great book for, for you to read. And so thank you so much for, for reading and also for watching this video. Take care of yourselves, look out for others, and we'll see you around on the next video.